Now, everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Felt a great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, like a job for me. Meet me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? Welcome to Westworld. All our hosts are here for you. Are you real? Well, if you can't tell, does it matter? We're miles beyond the glitch here. What are your drives? To meet my maker. I could laugh like that for all all the rest of the show. This is Douglas Viviani with the ever amused David Cohen. Why are you amused? What is that all about? We're talking about amusement parks, aren't we? Sort of. We're looking at like that's a clip from the uh, critically acclaimed HBO West World, which completed also its, known as West World. <laughs> it completed its run on HBO uh, a little ways back. Just ten episodes. It's been renewed. Uh, it's going to be on for another season, not until 2018. But uh, the question, I mean, everything old is new again, right? That was, if you don't remember or know this, was a movie with Yul Brenner in 1973. Very successful movie. Laid in the uh, doldrums for all these years until now and has come out as a a, a series. Um, it's. It, I thought it was terrific. I don't know. Did you get a chance to uh, to look at this? I did. I did. It's. I thought it's really good. I. I'm sorry. We have to wait till 2018 to see more. Exactly. I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's an amusement park inhabited by robots where you pay to enjoy living in a wild west with a guarantee that you cannot get hurt. Um, the original uh, story is created by Michael Crichton of the Jurassic Park. Fan. Yes. He also did Andromeda Strain, which was a movie. Congo, uh, the Great Train Robbery, Sphere. Rising Sun, Disclosure, and Timeline, all of which have been made into movies before his untimely passing, I believe, in 2008. Huh. So, I don't know. We're going to take a look at Westworld, but also, you know, and that's in particular, but in general, the amusement park is not only a place for fun, but for excitement, storytelling, and movies. Are there movies? Have there been movies about or surrounding amusement parks? We'll take you also behind the scenes of amusement parks, maybe Disney in particular, but in general, amusement parks, for some little-known secrets. I guarantee you, you would hear things on this show that you have never heard before about amusement parks and about Disney and even Walt Disney and his, his advice as to how he became successful. How do you think of that? How could you turn the show off if you hear all of that coming at you? It's the ultimate TV. Are, shows like ours? Like ours, because the public and everybody that's listening to us is getting what uh, we're professing, hopefully, to hopefully bring some fun to the radio. WFIN. That's WFIN. I'm struggling here because I cannot believe they've been around for, count them, Finley, Ohio. Count them, 1330 a.m., Count them. How many years? Seventy-five years. Wow, that's year. longer than radio's been around. How is that possible? They've been. Around, I don't know. Radio's been around seventy-five. This is nineteen forty-one. Radio was around nineteen forty-one. They started in forty-one. They're carrying our show for about two years now. Thirteen thirty WFIN. It's uh, the new sports weather authority. We just want to congratulate them on again. 70, it's amazing. Seventy-five years of radio and great radio, of course. Right. Especially when uh, everything old is new again is being broadcast. <laughs> but, no, it's a great station, and we're, we just love being in that area of the, uh, of the country. But congratulations again, 75 years. It's pretty, um, pretty amazing. Going back 77 years to 1939, I got a clip here of uh, one of the first movies that's centered around a carnival slash amusement park with W.C. Fields, You Can't Cheat, An Honest Man. Uh, just a, a great movie that, uh, if you haven't seen take a look at that. And let's just look and hear W.C. Fields doing his... Sal, you impugn my honor. It's my dear old grandfather, Lickbox, said, just before the sprung the trap, he said, you can't cheat an honest man. Never give a sucker an even break or smart enough a chump. 
There you go. You can't smarten up a chump, he says at the end. Uh, he always has these comments. you got to listen to what he's saying. He's, he was a genius physically. He did uh, you know, silent movies, and then he did, of course, talkies, and he did radio. Uh, guy was, I, I just think he's over the top. Was, and so what's the tie-in for him in <laughs> amusement parks? I don't know. <laughs> that took place as an amusement, in, in a, well, a carnival back in the day was an amusement park. I see. It was a, a traveling circus, if you will. They had all the, the fun rides and so forth. And that's where it all started from. Uh, um, in terms of Hollywood and movies, it then went to 1951, like another, you know, 11, 12 years later, Strangers on a Train. There was a huge carousel scene uh, in an Alfred Hitchcock movie called Strangers on a Train. But not much. There's not much done with amusement parks until uh, Westworld, again, the subject of our show, but not the HBO one. Listen to a small clip of the 73 movie and the way they promoted this. It was pretty cool. We will soon be landing at Westworld. World, the ultimate resort. Each resort is maintained by reliable computer technology and peopled by lifelike robot men and women. Our technology is designed to provide all this in complete safety, where nothing, nothing can possibly go wrong. I'm shot. Go wrong. Raw. Go wrong. Oh my God. Oh, see, because then it so it went wrong. I see. <laughs> She's saying no. It's the it's ironic. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the whole point. Is that Westworld now? If you look at the HBO series, you kind of do and don't know that that's going to happen. It's just being there's some foreshadowing to the end to the last episode where you see. Hey, wait a minute. There's something going on here because it's a much more of a discussion of the human condition and looking at it from the outside from these robots becoming self-aware and saying what what's this all about why are we being abused is there more to life than just dying and coming back to life uh as a robot you know living the same dream the same story over and over again so uh in the original with yul brenner you didn't see the reason why all of this happened you just it was more of an adventure uh robots against humans so i think hbo took took this this idea and ran with it. J.J. Abrams was one of the driving forces behind this. Uh, but I think it was just done so well, so great. I really think you should take a look at it. The only real problem is that, again, you got to wait until 2018 for the next installment. Uh, but you Jonathan, seem very upset over that. I am. It busts my chops. You, you must have really enjoyed the show. I then. really – it started to get rolling. It's You know, it takes a while. Yeah. To see these characters, learn the characters, Anthony Hopkins, uh, James uh, Marsden, uh, Ed Harris. I mean, these people you know that are on television, movie stars, you know, and really lent a great air to this show. But again, it was dark in the beginning and it was curious. You didn't know what's going on. So you're really involved in this mystery is what the heck are they going? Where are they going with this? And finally, at the end, they, they really gave you a cliffhanger that uh, answered a lot of questions, but also really uh, opens the door to, wow, come on, I want to see this. I want to see more of this. What's up? So we're going to have to contact HBO and ask them uh, to maybe advance this a little bit, just for our purposes. If they, Otherwise, can't, if they can't get us some of the actors on the TV show, could they get us like Yul Brenner? Is he still around? Maybe from the no, 73 he, movie? He passed away from yeah. cancer and smoking cigarettes. Listen to Roller Coaster 1977. This is cool. Get ready for the thrill of your life. Universal plunges you into a mystery at the speed of sound. An accident in California. A recording from a stranger. Get on the ride, Harry. A drop in Virginia. Remember what happens when you don't follow directions. And a man in the middle on the ride of his life. They're over the lift. It's too late to stop them now. Let's go. Roller coaster. Everything old is new again. Taking a look at <laughs> Roller Coaster, a movie you never have heard of. 1977. I got to do it quick. It was a movie that they presented to you in surround sound at the theater. So when you rolled this... Right, Which right, was new then. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And this hasn't... Who knows what it is now? It's, it's in amusement parks now, but it was in theaters. Where, when the roller coaster was going, you felt wind, you felt the, the seats move and so forth. So it was just your regular theaters done by sound. Uh, we'll be back. Everything old is new again. Listen to that. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. This summer, when you think vacation, think National Lampoon's Vacation. Don't you want to look at the Grand Canyon? It's educational. It's fun. Bob went on the picnic basket. National Lampoon's Vacation. 
vacation. I don't know what happened here that I clipped. This is Douglas Viviani with the rather amused David Cohen. We are discussing. I thought you'd jump in after that, but all right. We we are discussing amusement parks in general and Westworld in specifics. Uh, I just wanted to finish the thought on that roller coaster movie. movie. The experience was one again where it was sort of like surround sound, where you your seat kind of moved and you kind of felt as you rode rode the roller coaster, uh, you know, as if you were doing that with some wind. They had some fans and all that. Uh, so the amusement parks do that now like crazy, and it's a great experience. But this was the generation uh, or the genesis of that in '77. The movie was about a guy that uh, basically planted a bomb on a roller coaster and said to the uh, by blackmailing uh, the the amusement park if you don't give me x amount of dollars i'm going to blow up the roller coaster with people on it and mm. so you never knew if that was going to happen or not they wrote you rode the roller coaster four or five times from the point of view of being on the roller coaster and you didn't know if your coaster was going to be the one because they weren't paying they didn't want to pay the uh, the ransom and the police are trying to find this guy, so you didn't know if he's going to press the button to destroy the roller coaster or not. Well, so, you were on it. I see. So you kept riding the roller coaster, never knowing whether it was going to blow up. Exactly. Of course, there are the scenes, but you would keep coming. They would keep coming back to that. Okay, I now see. there's a new roller coaster you're on, and and in between, okay, the police are trying to find this guy, and okay, we're not going to pay. Okay, we just got the call. It was, a, it was a novel idea. Yeah, I I, I re just I really distinctly remember watching that at 15 years old in the theater, thinking this is. The the future. This is going to be tremendous a movie going. Um, I was wrong only in that amusement parks are the only thing that grabbed onto that and perfected it now. You go to any amusement mm. park, you've got those interactive rides, right? Right. Um, uh, just like you know, a vacation, uh, the vacation movie, people get all hopped up to go to the amusement park. Question is, is it always as fulfilling as you think it should be. <laughs> it certainly wasn't for the characters on the way to Wally World. First one's here. Come on, I'll race you. Sorry, folks. We're closed for two weeks to clean and repair America's favorite family fun park. Sorry. <laughs> whole spiel uh, cross country to get to California from Chicago they finally get there and it's before the internet and all that and uh, the volley world is closed yeah yeah I <laughs> so that's that. like brings up memories of the like the worst vacations ever uh, have you any experience in that field I mean most people's parents have I don't know established vacations and you go on a cruise or whatever and you have a great time I don't know this there are some that go awry well I not a vacation but I I grew up in Coney Island, right by the amusement park. So I remember when I was a little kid, my grandfather took me on the whip. You know, that thing, it was these big, if you remember, big red chairs you sat in with a big back behind you. And, and it would just literally go around in a circle and whip you around. Uh, and the chair would spin at the same time. So I threw up all over him. That's <laughs> And he, he was really cool about it, though. He was very cool about it. <laughs> The centrifugal force didn't stop the uh, the projectile from. I'm sure he wasn't the only one hit by it, but, but he he, <laughs> but got he the was good natured about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he felt bad for me, as any good grandfather would. But yeah, he. But had you a remember that? Think about it. how old were you? Oh God, I must have been. Wow, maybe five or six. I still remember it. Is that amazing? Yeah. You have that that memory. I've uh, never been on a roller coaster ride since. Really? Yeah. It's I was um, not into roller coasters at all. Until about 16, I went on a double date, maybe 17, on a double date with uh, our friend Ed G, if you remember him sure. from high school, yep. and two young ladies. And we went to uh, an amusement park uh, in New Jersey, a great adventure. And the two girls and, and, and he were totally into Rolling Thunder, this huge roller coaster. And we've got to do this. We, let's, you know, it's the greatest thing. And you are 17, and all you want to do is impress the young lady. Sure. So you had I had to go. And I swear we did this probably about twenty five times, maybe twenty to twenty five times. The first five I was sick you to my went stomach. on the ride twenty five times? Yes, yes. Because we were not so we were kids, we got there at nine in the morning. We so the girls went with you? They they encouraged it. They wanted it. They these girls were totally into Who it. Who were the girls? I probably remember them. Can you Liz B. Yeah. And I don't remember the other girl. Liz B was my uh date. And uh and so we just kept going, kept going. And after a while, I finally got, this is a weird thing, I finally got used to it. And then 
like maybe the last 15 to 10 times. I was totally into it. And since then, I joined the Roller Coaster Enthusiast Club. I've traveled the country. I always go on roller coasters wherever I go. I know almost every roller coaster around. If I haven't done them, I know them. And uh, like at Roller Coaster Magazines. Wow. And now you can go on YouTube and you can ride any roller coaster you want by just watching. You know, I mean, you're not riding it, but you're watching it on your computer or your tablet, and they'll take you through the entire roller coaster. I do that with with my little girl Angelica every so often we'll we'll ride them at from home you know have you been on one with her an actual roller yes coaster? uh yes i get into trouble with that because uh there's a small little park museum park around the corner from us here adventureland on route 110 in farmingdale and they always do something new the newest thing they did this year it'd be last year now when we talk about it uh was they installed a new roller coaster that actually it's because they don't have a lot of room. It, it it's smaller, but as you go up and down and around, the seat itself t- turns around. Oh God, that's a barfarama experience. <laughs> so it's your experience times not only just going round and round, but going round and round. Not it's not that fast, but, but it goes round, down but and up and down and around move. turns. So uh, I How was online to do? take Angelica, my ah. seven year old, on this, and my wife was with my four year old Leo, who want nothing to do with this. But they they were getting something. They came back and they saw me on the line for that one, as opposed to the Caterpillar, which was a small <laughs> roller coaster. Uh-huh. And she gr- literally grabs me by the ear, and you're not going on this ro- ride with my seven year old. Wow. So she didn't get to do that. But we've done many others you know they have these intermediate ones for kids that are sure. sort of you know not the huge ones and she's loved she loves yeah, them all okay. so the two of us are going to ride roller coasters for for quite some time hopefully not to this uh result just like in sandlot when they had the tobacco You're killing me, Smalls. there you go chew it of course you do yes yeah sure man all the pros do yeah yeah gives you tons of energy Just a little. I mean, that's what happened to you, right? Yeah. Well, you didn't have tobacco, but the same thing happened in that movie, if you remember Sandlot. Sure. Uh, it's a typical experience. I guess it's something that's frightening for everybody is to get sick. There is a hint. Don't eat rotten cotton candy. Trust me. Cotton candy and roller coasters do not mix. <laughs> that's for sure. That's your personal experience? <laughs> yes. Uh, have you ever thrown up on a roller coaster? Never. Wow. Never. Okay. Uh, and not even when I've gotten off of it. I mean, some people well, get off and they get right. they get they barf. Right. Um, I love them. I don't know why. Just it's. I feel safe in that. Not safe, but I know that it's kind of safe. My uh, like you have those local. Hello. Uh oh, that's a call. That's a phone call. Hey, that's we got be- our first caller. <laughs> and you telling you to pay for the twenty five rides you took. <laughs> Or it could be Adventure Land giving me some tickets because I promoted their uh, their roller coaster. I thought that was a pretty cool one. But anyway, the point is, I, I've never gotten sick per se, but I certainly understand it happening. Um, you just got to just hang in there. The next step is Jurassic Park. Do you remember this? Welcome to Jurassic Park. We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. Universal Pictures presents. You feel that? Hold on to your butts. An adventure. Look out! No! I can't get Jurassic Park back online. 65 million years in the making. How about that? That's the next step of, of I mean, it's fictional, but we are doing so many things with, you know, these roller coasters and these amusement parks. Things are coming alive. The Hall of Presidents, right, comes alive. I think you're going to see the next adventure is going to be a Westworld type or even a, no, I don't think they're going to do Jurassic Park, but a Jurassic Park type of adventure. And we'll be back on Everything Old is New it again to continue talking about amusement parks and Westworld. Communicate with us on Everything Old is New again, dot biz. Everything old is new again. Dot biz or old new again. Dot com. Yo! Now back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Now a great deal of time, sweat, and a few tears were expended on all this, but there's a lot of satisfaction in developing ideas into realities which become a part of Disneyland. Here we go. That was uh, Walt Disney himself from 1966, and this is Douglas uh, Viviani from 2016. No, 
We just changed. It's 2017, along with David Cohen here on Everything Old is New Again. David, you still there? I'm still back in 16, but yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> and we're now we have evolved from looking at uh, Westworld uh, to taking a look at the happiest place on Earth, the biggest amusement park that we can think of. And I just wanted to take a few moments to take a look at some cool stuff you could find in Disney, in Disneyland or Disney World, some hidden gems, behind-the-scenes stuff that you're not going to hear anywhere else but on Everything Old is New Again, talking about Disney. I'm going to start with a simple one. By the, Did you ever think of, uh, you know, you're walking around this park, no one is chewing gum anywhere because guess what? They don't sell gum or permit gum on the park because they don't want them stuck to rides and the sidewalk. What are they, so what, if you're chewing gum, do they stop you and make you spit it out? I don't think there's a gum police per se, but they're certainly not selling it nor promoting it. I see. <laughs> I see. I don't know how interesting it is. But along those lines, I'll, I'll go to the next step because this is kind of tied in. There's a, never a trash can more than 30 steps from where you are in Disney. Wow. About this, like my dorm room, I remember. There was never any – I could step anywhere I wanted to, and I would step very close to garbage. Not necessarily in a pail or anything. It was just all over, just treasured all over the floor. So you must have felt right at home at Disney because exactly. you could just throw your stuff wherever you want. And you could throw it wherever you want as long as uh, you know it's within 30 feet of you. You're going to hit a garbage pail. But think about how much thought went into that, <clears throat> how much thought that Disney believed the average person trash is carrying around with them so that at any time right. so that they always need to be near a garbage can. The question is, think about, I mean, those pails have to be cleaned out all the time. I had heard, now this isn't true, I don't think, but I, I had heard that they're like bottomless pails, so when you throw it in, it goes into some underground system, right, that they just sweep the streets under the underneath. Well, there is an underground, that's for sure. Um, whether that second part of it is true or not, I don't, don't know, but that makes a lot of sense, because you never, I don't think you've, I've ever seen dumping someone garbage dumping garbage out, right? and cleaning garbage. Right. Uh, out from these pails. So that's sort of ingenious. I don't know if you have any interesting tidbits. That's all I had. No, <laughs> did, did you know that uh, <clears throat> that 14 of the opening day attractions in the Magic Kingdom are still running? And think about how many years it's been. That's early 60s. Yeah, that's crazy. It's be like 55 years. So what, let's hear what, uh, I mean, like what? I mean, you think about it, like your your laptop dies after three or four years, right? These are these are rides that that are they're handling moving people around, and they're still working after all these years. Pretty Amazing! Cool. Like what? What ride you got there? Uh, for instance, uh, like the Country Bear Jamboree, still going. Okay. I mean, Very, think, how many times did that thing break down? Right over fifty uh, well, years. How would you still? know? It's a freaking snore fest. But okay, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Uh, Jungle Cruise, The Mad Tea Party, Peter Pan's Flight, Swiss Family Treehouse, The Hall of Presidents, um, The Hall of Vice Presidents. There is none. I'm just seeing if you're still listening. Uh, Tomorrowland Speedway. Still that's going. Cool. That's fair. Yeah. No, I, I think that's cool. That's, it did, but in today's world, look at those rides compared to what they have now. You know? So we go back to the snooze fest? Yeah. Uh, I think they're yeah. Kind of snooze. But if you Mostly. know what? Listen, if you've got kids under, uh, let's say, 10, those are still all great. It's great a small rides. world is one of them. That's yeah. that's still, I mean, even for adults, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, ride. that's a big hit. That is, that's true. It's good. I don't mean to put it down. I don't want Disney on our on our. On the the old is new again, bad wagon. And, and, they're on, and they're on the show next week. Exactly. So we gotta, yeah. <laughs> they're pretty, pretty powerful. <clears throat> anyway, uh, did you know that Walt Disney had an apartment above the Disney Fire Department and would visit the location and stay there at night? So now after his death, there is a signal used... And it's basically a light in the window they keep on all the time as if he's there to keep his memory alive. Wow. That's kind of cool. Is someone still paying rent? Or... <laughs> Speaking of Disney himself, he came up, I don't know if you ever knew, knew this, he came up with the idea for Disney itself um, while sitting on a park bench. He was kind of sitting on a park bench in Griffith Park, and he was thinking about, you know, Things that he can do where his children and his daughter can play. And he came up with the idea of Disneyland right then and there. You just came up with a swing set. And this guy thought of Disney. So exactly. There's, there's a difference. And I had to go buy the swing set. I didn't invent right. that at all. Um, so think about that. And they actually have 
the actual, I think that's crazy, the actual seat or the park bench that he was on when he came up with the idea. Get out of here, really? He must have gone back to uh, the well, Did water. they transport it from? Yes, it's there with a, a moniker right there on, on the grounds if you take a look for it. <laughs> wow. That's did what not know had. that. Yeah. Did not know that. You know, you got a Mark Twain riverboat. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It's on a little lake there. There's a huge riverboat you can ride around. If you want, all you need to do is ask and they'll let you pilot it. Really? Yeah, but you got to ask. Hmm. If you don't know, they don't advertise that. If right. you don't know that secret, you're not piloting that thing. You know, they do that in American Airlines, too. Do you know, you can actually pilot it. You have to ask, though. <laughs> they won't offer it. But, uh, but if you want to, you can take you, control yeah. for a few minutes. No problem. Ah, that's how you get those wings, huh? Those little <laughs> silver wings. Uh, what else? You got anything interesting? Uh, I know his one. I'm going to uh, take uh, one. I yeah, love it. Go ahead. There's a purple teacup in the Mad Hatter. You talked about the Mad Hatter ride, the original. If you take the purple teacup, it will spin three times as fast as any of the others. Wow. So if you really want to get sick, that's the one you go on. Okay. The purple one. What about you? You got to have something else. Come on. I do. You're I thumbing do. through papers there. What do you got? All right. So you know how most of the lawns in the Disney parks are, are very manicured, very meticulously manicured. Everything yes. looks perfect. But if you go to the Haunted Mansion and look at the surroundings, that lawn and, and everything that grows on it is left to grow out and die. They actually let it die to match the mood of, of the ride. That's what I tell my wife every weekend in the summer when the <laughs> grass match, is not cut. Match the mood of the house. The Inside and outside exactly. the house? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I've got to leave it there because I could talk about that. That should really be a my... ride. I'd like to get, visit the Viviani that's, house. That's a going. show unto itself. I'm biting my tongue because I don't want to get into trouble. Uh, <clears throat> not that she listens to the show or anything. Um, <laughs> further, if you want, there's a cool souvenir you can get from the haunted mansion. But, you again, you have to know this. You have to ask for it. You want to say how you would like a death certificate. So as you're on the way in, you ask for that. They'll take your name, I presume, down. And when you're done with that particular, I'm going to call it a ride, but that particular event, you walk out and they hand you a death certificate with your name on it, printed and broiled with the Haunted Mansion emblem on it. Wow. If that doesn't make your day, I don't know what does. <laughs> you know, some people sneak in. They don't allow this. They don't want it. But people sneak in ashes of their deceased family members and sprinkle them all over the haunted house or dizzy in, in general. Really? And it's a, it's a it, kind of an epidemic. They really are looking around for that to make wow. sure people don't do that. It's not legal. They don't want to do it. Anyway, so that, <laughs> that's a little piece of it. What about you? Right. Any, anything else? That's it? That's all you got? No, no. I have I have one more. Okay, just one. Well, I have. Uh, well, I think we only have time for one. Um, I don't know why I'm saying that. I just feel like we should just do one more. Um, so the Toy Story characters... Um, they're, they're used to drop to the ground when, when guests yell, Andy's coming. Uh, but the practice has been discontinued. You know why? Why? Uh, for safety reasons. But apparently, uh, apparently, um, you the know. The characters would just drop to the ground. Left yeah. Right. But they still, they don't drop to the ground, but they will stop where they are and freeze. Ah, like a mannequin yes. thing. Because to keep it alive, because those are toys that are only alive when no one's looking. Right. Right, as per the show. So check that out. There's a bunch of feral cats all throughout Disneyland that you'll not see during the day. They're kind of like, you know, hiding with all the people. But they come out at night, and they keep them on the grounds to take care of the rodent problem. How about that? Well, that's some Disney magic right there. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, so you see a cat chasing down a rat in the middle of the night. That, yeah. That's nice for the kids. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> the happiest place on earth for everybody. Uh, finally, there's also um, a VIP area that you can have alcohol called Club 33. Problem is, you got to pay twenty five thousand dollars a year for a membership, and then uh, ten thousand dollars a year thereafter. So stars, when they go to Disney, they have this little club called Club 33, and that's where they go. We'll be back, and everything old is new again. This is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. They're not looking for a story that tells them who they are. They already know who they are. They're here because they want a glimpse of who they could be. Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. This is Douglas Viviani. That was Anthony Hopkins from the new hit HBO series, Westworld, telling us basically why people go to amusement parks, which is what Westworld is. And I think that's very interesting. He talks about it and says, you know, it's, it's to find out more about yourself.
And going back to Disney, because he's they've the, the most successful amusement park uh, that there is. But most amusement parks have secrets, which we spoke about um, behind the scenes. But also Disney, we can learn more about life and about success in uh, you know in business from 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 Disney. So let's take that uh, one step beyond and talk about Disney himself and how did he, uh, or what precepts did he develop. Uh, to to become successful in the world, what can we learn from Disney and Disney World and its creation? I know, David, you had something we spoke. We were talking about this park bench. Yeah, you were talking before about how Walt Disney came up with the idea for the theme park uh, when he was sitting on a park bench and thinking about how what he could do for his kids uh, to make to make their life more more enjoyable. So one of the concepts I think he he came up with, which was pretty innovative at the time, was apparently back then amusement parks were were just very disorganized and and kind of dirty. So he wanted to make an amusement park that was clean to stand out from the rest and also be an experience more than just a place to, to go and have fun. So that concept of you know, creating something entirely new from, out of an existing industry was pretty innovative at the time. Um, so that, that was one, one of the, I guess, Disney... Well, he also said that this park is going to be clean and right. uh, different than others. And then we saw that where they, if you re-listen to the last part of the show, every 30 steps there is another trash receptacle. So, uh, I don't know, he just took those ideas and put them into practice. And along those lines, he is known to have said, you, you really want to def defy convention. Uh, so much of his rise was about uh, block, you know, bucking the odds and ignoring critics. Uh, and his famous quote, I don't know how famous it is now, but he um, loved hearing and repeating what Einstein once said, which was, great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. Think about that, you know. Um, there are always those, no matter what you do in life, you want to start a radio show, you want to, you know, open a, a cake uh, baking shop, whatever it might be, there are always those, for whatever reasons, lots of different reasons, will say, ah, yeah, what are you doing that for? What's up with that? You can't, you can't do that. Just, just stay as a lawyer and, you know, leave it be, please, or whatever it might be, right? Uh, have you counted that and seen that in life? Uh, as you, <laughs> I have, and, and that also leads, but it also leads to another uh, concept. Not, not that he created the concept, right. but it's something we talk about here pr fairly often. Is that you know pursue your passion and then and then worry about the money later. So like with this radio show, you know uh, we're obviously worrying about the money much later. But <laughs> for now, we're following our passion, and and he did that also. He w he was bankrupt several times, and he you know leveraged every. You know, new concept or, or or new type of asset that he needed to build a studio went more and more into debt. But as that first one started making money, he would just pump all the profits into the next one. Um, so again, he he, I think he did it not just to to make money, which ultimately he did, but but it was something he was passionate about. That's right. what drove it. Right. First, he he drew the first, of course, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and all of that, and then uh, that started to take off. He sold that a bit uh, and made money from that strip or a comic strip. And people told him, you're going to make movies with, with these animated characters? What, are you kidding me? Movies? with No one's sitting down for an hour and a half to, or two hours to watch an animated character movie. And he said, yes, we will. So rather than just say, I'm just going to stay with these little shorts that are very successful in the 1930s and 40s of Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, and that's, that's it. He said, I have dreams to do other stuff. So he took that, like you said, he took that money and, and that popularity and bucked the trend and said, no, I believe people, if it's done well, will watch a movie for two hours. And then just take a look at Frozen recently. And uh, what's that new one with the um, the newest one? Uh, Mayana, Ma Ma Moana, I can't remember the pronounced name. Right, but, right, you know, right. that, they're all huge, of course, successes. We know that. Uh, so, again, he followed his instincts, and that's something else he said is, if you got an instinct, you have something inside of you that says, I believe this, you know, you yourself know it's going to happen. Uh, hopefully your instincts are right, but he's telling you, you know, follow your instincts at least until the dream dies, you know, right. Um, right. or you're successful. Right. I mean, of course, there's practicality. You've got to make some money uh, to live. Uh, to be able to to, to live, the, but you can't this, you but. can't just do it for the money, or else it's right. not you know you're not you're not going to be happy. 
Right, and, and you're going to stop once you get that couple of paychecks. Look at um, a lot of these musicians or these ball players and all that this day. We might be a little controversial statement, but baseball players used to live and work for 20, 25 years in, on the field. Um, musicians used to you know, create and continue to create music. How many like one or two album people are there are out there, or one or two, uh, three or four great baseball seasons people out there, and then they just kind of disappear? Not everybody, but there are those that just did it for the money. And listen, we, we made our couple of bucks, like the Knack. They were tremendous. And then they just stopped. They made the money. They, they kind of went awry uh, with the, you know socially and what they were doing with the money and all that. But that was it, especially the lead guy. It was like, all right, you know, I, I made it. I'm, that's it. They're hmm. done. Because it was kind of like not for the craft. It, they had right. the craft. But right. then once you got the money, the money took over, and that was it. We don't need to be creative anymore. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Do you think I that hope. happens with musicians and stuff? Like, you know, look at McCartney. I'm not saying that he's not creative, but... Well, I think it happens with, with anyone in the entertainment field, right? You start getting... You start believing what all the, the sycophants say about, you know, your your followers say about you and how great you are. And, and you know, a lot of them just either drop out or they get lazy or they turn to drugs or whatever. And... Uh, yeah, it just doesn't work. Hopefully that doesn't happen with us. Right. I think that, you know, the success we've experienced, I don't think we're letting it get to our heads, and that's important. Right, but we have seen a couple shows back, we did the best ofs, and there was some time travel there. Something went on with, uh, remember the one about the, the what was it, the, the theme of Sherlock Holmes? The Sherlock Holmes one. But uh, the other one I'm talking about was uh, when they did like the, the Sunshine Boys. Oh, and right. They were trying to get, this is like 30 years now, trying to get us back <laughs> together. <laughs> right. right. Uh, so, yeah, something happened, or you know, had some contract negotiation issues in the future. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. Yeah, we have to be careful. We don't want to believe our own press. That, let's not get too big-headed, right? <laughs> if we, the, the next press call, uh, clipping we get from about our show will be the first. Yes, so, uh, that, looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to get to our head too, too significantly. But back to um, uh, uh, to Westworld, just for a few minutes. Uh, they completed the season. Season was 10 shows. Tremendous shows. I love the show. It's it does evolve into a discussion about the human condition and uh, and what makes us human and what makes good versus evil and, and why do we do certain things and all of that uh, because the robots are becoming somewhat self-aware and trying to determine what are they doing and why are they being abused and so forth. Um, but the question is, it's 10 episodes. Did you get into it for the 10 episodes where you can wait until, guess what, 2018 for the next episode? That's what's just been announced. I know, I know. It's a bit, it's a bit shocking. I mean, these shows sometimes take a long time to to come out with a new season, as we know. But, um, but this one is especially long. Maybe they just didn't think that it would, you know, catch on. They spent so much money on the ten episodes. Right? Possibly, but the arc for this show that's that was, uh, let me say, uh, presented to HBO is a five season arc. Now, what is a season? Is confused now. It used to be just one year of 22 episodes or 39 back in the day. Now, what is a season? I don't know. I guess 10 is a season. But Sometimes the, they even split it up into they split seasons in half. So you, you're, yes. you're showing six shows and then seven shows a year from now, and it's still considered one season. Yeah, that's what The Walking Dead's doing. Very you know? confusing. Uh, so, yeah, so but it's a si five-season arc. So let's assume that that's to them is a season is 10 episodes. That's 50 episodes. So they've got quite a bit of a story to tell yet, presuming they get the ratings. Right. Um, so we'll see. I, I think it's a, it's a real, um, I'm not going to say fun show. It's an interesting <laughs> show. It's a dark show. But Anthony Hopkins is tremendous in that. And as is, um, what's that other fellow's name from? Uh, Ed Harris. Ed Harris. Yeah. I mean, he really was. And then Matt, Michael They're Madison. all good. They're, but everybody in this show is really, really it's a good. Great, yeah, it's great. Hopefully maybe next year HBO will contact us. We'll get a guest on uh, from them. You never know. I think I think it's a phenomenon. It's phenomenal. It's a phenomenon. Just like everything old is new again. We'll be back next week to dive into more entertainment pop culture. Mm -hmm.